Okay. Joanne, you'll be taking roll call for us. Yes. Okay, great. We are on. Ma'am, your meeting. Good morning, hey, everyone. I'm sorry. Uh, Jen said that she doesn't seem to have a link. Ed, she doesn't have a link. That out. It's in the meeting. It's in the meeting invitation that Ed sent out yesterday morning. Give me two seconds, and I will resend one out to her. I'll let her know. Yeah, it's in the calendar also. Well, no, that's for the public. All right, I just sent her another one. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Okay, Ed, we're ready. Okay, it's your, it's your meeting, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, this meeting will now come to order of the T Coventry Town Council. The time is uh, 10.04. Madam Clerk, please take a roll call. Kimberly Shockley. Here. Jennifer Ludwig. Here. Jamie LeBlanc? Here. Ann Dixon? Here. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. LeBlanc, please lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. A warm welcome to the public, the staff from Covent the Town of Coventry, and Mr. Wazika, our interim town manager. I would like to introduce the people who are on the tiles that you may see. Uh, we have with us Ms. Monique Cool, which is with the Sewer Assessment Program, Mr. Kevin McKee, uh, DPW Director, uh, Mr. Glenn Skirka, Chairperson of the Sewer Subcommittee, and Ms. Lisa Mills, Finance Director. Uh, Mr. Wazika, how many people do we have on the call with us today? 17. 17, excellent. Members of the public, welcome. The public is encouraged to ask questions. Mr. Wazika will present on the following, the history of the Coventry sewer program, prior and current prob problems with the sewer program. He's gonna review the Auditor General's sewer program report, which was released March, 2019. He's going to make comments about moving forward the future of the sewer enterprise fund and program. The, cover, the public is encouraged to ask questions as the presentation is being made and time is allotted for public comment at the end of the meeting. The council will not take any action this morning or conduct any votes. At a future meeting, the council will review the feedback from today's meeting and determine a course of action. This meeting, as mentioned, is educational and informational. We want to focus on comments from the members of the public. May I have a motion from a member of the council to allow questions from the public as the presentation is being made. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. LeBlanc. Do I have I'll a second? I'll second the motion. Thank you, Ms. Ludwig. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Members of the public, Please feel free to uh, raise your hand so that um, Mr. Wazika may recognize you. When you are recognized, please give your name and your address and we'll move forward. Mr. Wazika, we're anxious to hear your presentation. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're probably more anxious than I was about trying to do this and put everything together. Uh, I, I've been looking at this for a while and uh, obviously we're all well aware of our issues that we've got with our, with our sewer system, where it's going. Before I get started on all of that though, the council and the town and the citizens have to make a decision because what we do moving forward and how much work and things we do to make changes really depends on what the goal of the town is with the sewer enterprise fund. We've got three options with the fund. 
we can we can sit on it where it is and let any new customers come in on that lines are already in the ground and not put a shovel in and just work from there. It's only natural expansion from new new development that goes on. And there is some 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 going on and there will be some over the over the next couple of years, more than likely a substantial number of new properties coming in into the system. The problem with that is the, the, the users are limited, the costs are shared by fewer people and the expenses keep going up and up with equipment that needs to be replaced at times, uh, facilities that need to be upgraded, maintained, those costs are just gonna continue. Second option is council makes the decision to move forward and begin re-engaging with the sewer enterprise fund and, and start looking at and putting new pipe in the ground, expanding it out, bringing new users on, making the decisions on where, where the, the best places to go with it. Personally, the industrial area going down Tioga is what I would consider the, the absolute priority, as well as the, uh, the Briar Point area where we've got a dry line, we've got substantial capacity over there. We're waiting to do a, uh, we need to do a, a, a sewer substation to be able to engage that. There's a lot of desire by the residents in that area to get the sewers online because of the conditions that, that they're dealing with. So that's option two probably one of the better options. Option three, try to either get this whole system put together with West Wall and become a regionalized system like the narrow Bay, Gansett Bay Commission is, or sell the system outright to either, either West Warwick or some other entity and, uh, and get out of the, the business completely. Those are the three options. The third option is not gonna re do anything to assist the, the people that are already on the system. The, the costs are going to still be there. They're going to pro could possibly even be even higher. I just want to make make a point. If anybody in the audience is, has a question they want to ask, please just raise your hand, and I will bring you in. All right. So let me start with a, a, a short history of the sewer fund. Okay. So the history of the existing sewers. The process actually began in about 1966. They did a study or they conducted a study on, on the need for, uh, for sewers in the town. As you can see, it took till the 80s till we actually finally started making moves and doing something. The first areas that were put on, New London Turnpike, Broad Street, Woodland Manor, the Arnold Road Pumping Station, North, North Road Terrace sewers, North Branch Interceptor, for Victor Electric, Hopkins Hill Sewers. All of those were put on back in the, in, in the 80s, early 90s. You had contract 3-1 and 3-2, which was Tayo Gav in the Washington Street area. Sandy Bottom Road pumping station was built back then. Had Hopkins Hill Road, Tayo Avenue, uh, Anthony Street, Fairview, Ramble Wood Estates, all those were back in 07. 08, we had Main Street, uh, Boston Street areas. You also had Johnson's Boulevard go in, in in 08. Jump ahead to 12, we had Lakeside Drive area. 14, the Industrial Drive area. And then 16, 17, which is not on this list because it wasn't on this uh, slide that I stole from Weston and Sampson on one of their reports was North, Northern Arnold Road, Southern Arnold Road, and no one will ever forget Hazard Street which started the whole problem. And that was also back in 17. So that's a brief, quick, high altitude overview of, of the construction that's taken place. The town has attempted twice, excuse me, three times for bonds involving to go out to a town-wide bonding for, uh, for sewage. They had a vote on August 19th and 71. They were looking for a $7 million bond for the, the, the installation of sewers, that failed. June 2nd and 87, they went back out. This time, they'd already begun the process. They went out for a $750,000 construction of her dry line on Hopkins Hill Road until that was connected in. That surprisingly passed. And then back in January 14th of 94, another attempt was made at a town-wide referendum for $8 million this time, and that one also failed. So those are the three all 
town-wide referendums that were put out on Suez. All of the other bonding has all been done uh, through the uh, legalese of uh, the Sewer Enterprise Fund and what was done there. Jamie, you, uh, Mr. LeBlanc, you have a question? Just a clarification. You, you mentioned Hazard Street started the problem. No, no. I just, no, I just I, wanted to clarify. I, I apologize. I did not. <laughs> oh, started the inquiry. Shouldn't say problem, inquire. If I, if I misspoke, I apologize. Because the residents did get the Auditor General involved. Right. Here. I, uh, not, and, and this is not, why we have the recommendations that we no. have. So just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Poor choice of words. I apologize. Thank you, Jamie. Mr. Okay. Wasiker is so excited about this program that occasionally he might use an incorrect word, but you know what he really means. But good to clarify. Yep. Thank you. As long as I don't use any real incorrect words today, I'll be doing good. Yes, we know what they are. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go through as far as some of the ordinances and what and the changes in the rates, the assessment rates, as well as uh, the, uh, the usage rates. So back in 97, there was an ordinance 97-0204. Uh, it was signed on 131.96 by James Kiley, and it was adopt, ad, adopted on that same day. And that set a, uh, an assessment rate of $3,500 per unit, $1,750 per mobile home, and $30 per thousand evaluation on the commercial side. Those numbers were not chosen based or not developed based on the cost of the project. It was simply a number that uh, they came came up with. So it didn't it didn't meet the need of actually paying for the construction of, of those projects at the time. Second ordinance was 04-0235, uh, and that was signed on 218-03, and it was adopted on 324-03. And what that did is it, it, it readjusted that $3,500 up to $4,200 per housing unit, $2,100 by mobile home, and $35 per thousand on the commercial value. Again, not based on actual construction costs, simply a number that was chosen in uh, and utilized. Third time, back in 24, yeah, just screw up on that. That's 09. Um, ordinance number 04 0239 that was signed on 4104 and adopted on 42604. Uh, Mr. William Hall was the one who signed that. And that's when they moved up the cost on the assessment to $6,600 per housing unit, $3,300 per mobile home. $55 per 100,000 on valuation commercial. They also added the sewer use fees as well for coverage. At the time, it was 34 cents a 100 cubic foot and 90 cents uh, per cubic foot for the cap, uh, capital replacement and debt service. So that was the user fees. Again, $6,600, no basis on actual cost. These were numbers that were just used. These are some of the biggest problems that we faced with, with the program, that these numbers were not meeting the need of, of the actual cost for the program. In uh, 07, they increased the sewer use fee and combined both fees into a single number, and they came up with $1.55 a 100 cubic feet. Some of these earlier usage fees were based on, on studies that were, were conducted and based on, on uh, the cost of doing business, some of them weren't. That's one of the, another issue. A lot of this was done without any concern for actually paying off the debt and the, the cost of, of the program. Uh, in 09, there was a, another new ordinance that was signed and that put a, a, a price tag of $12,900 per house $6,600 per mobile home and $60 per thousand on the commercial side plus CPI. So that would ra rise uh, as needed. This also superseded all of the other ordinances uh, and, and everything, all the others basically uh, went away. Uh, there was an amendment to this ordinance back in 13 that uh, reduced the interest rate down to 6% maximum cap on the uh, on the assessments prior to that uh mo what was the what was the cost prior to that do you know the interest rate i 
I believe it was 8%. Yes, it was 8%. Couldn't find my mute. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. And jump in, gentlemen, ladies, jump in at any time if there's something that I'm, uh, I'm missing. I'm uh, just concerned. I don't want to misstate anything. So if I'm making something, please correct me. Okay. In 10, we took over billing for West Warwick and we added their charge of $4 into the usage fees. In 13, we increased the sewer use rate to 283. In 14, it increased to 340, and West Warwick went up to 415. Uh, that, in fact, was the last time up until last year that we made a change in the usage fee. That fee alone was not was not based on the recommended uh, the recommended uh, use rate uh, to meet the need. Uh, when you were you were on the board at that time, correct? Correct. And uh, the council, council in the past decided not to increase it to where it needed to go to. And they had stopped. And from that point on, no additional rate increases were, were authorized for nearly seven years. Again, all part of the issue with developing the deficit in this program and why the program has the issues that it has. All right. So 2015, new ordinance was passed and that, and for the first time, the construction costs were taken into account for setting up the uh, the assessments on the uh, on the properties on any of the on any of the contracts being done. Uh, they also in added a betterment clause to it. Mo, do you want to explain that a little bit, or Glenn, one of you? I can explain that. So the betterment assessment is is based on two things. One, contractors who are building sewer infrastructure that gets turned over to the town. So for instance, new subdivisions that are um, developed where the road that is built within the subdivision becomes a town road and the infrastructure in that road becomes town property. So contractors build the sewer infrastructure at, at their expense, they turn it over to the town and then their betterment assessment applies to them where they pay a reduced assessment because they paid for the in infrastructure. The second scenario for betterment assessments is properties that have already been assessed and they have a change of use after they've been assessed. They, there's no new construction required. Um, it's just a change of use that has a, either an increase in flow or possibly a decrease in flow, but whatever the change is, the change is assessed at the increased amount from what they were previously assessed and a betterment assessment applies to them too because there is no new infrastructure required on the town's behalf. All right, thank you. We have a, uh, we have a, uh, a participant who would like, who's got a question. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring him in so we can ask. Eric, uh, please state your name if you if you care to. You don't have to in this case, uh, but if you would, that'd be great. Your address and what's your question? Eric, can you hear me? You're still on mute. Is that better? There we go, sir. All right, it's Eric Wilson, 40 Hazard Street. And I was wondering about the uh, standard of that betterment assessment, because by my math, the Brady O'Sullivan that uh, was once a mill is now apartments. His betterment assessment reduced his assessment cost over 90%. And I was wondering how is that like reasonable for the town going forward? I understand giving them a reduced rate, but you know, like you grade it on a curve and you're not taking 90% off the cost you know i would understand something a lot lower like 10 to 20 percent but 90 percent is that what's going to be happening going forward because that's not beneficial for the residents they're getting hammered by these assessment fees mo you were around when when that took place glenn as well do you know how that number was reduced to that point because i haven't been able to find documentation on why it went to the number the, the rate that it did go on that property yeah, I can answer that. So, Eric, the 
um, the Anthony Mill, that was an agreement made with the town council on what their assessment was. And their assessment predated the uh, betterment assessment and the ordinance that included the betterment assessment. So they weren't subject to a betterment assessment. They made an arrangement directly with the town council for the assessment that they have. So they made a backroom deal. I don't know if it was a back room, side room, whatever it was, but I think it was some. It was part of a development agreement that was um, that was started with the town council and the planning stages of actually converting that mill into what it is now. All right, just more example of the mismanagement from the past. Mo, well, you got I'm, really, I'm just, I'm just really hoping that's you know mismanagement like that is not what continues in this town. That's uh, that's exactly what we're trying to eliminate, and why we're when we we are trying to move this forward, fix the problems. The problem is we can't change what what happened in the past. Any of the any of the mistakes, any of the issues that have occurred, they they happened. It's been prior councils, prior town managers. There's there's enough to go around all over the place on what what hap what's happened in the past. We only can move it forward and but and and look to the future to, to fix those issues and uh, prevent them from happening again. And that's what we're attempting to do now. Um, right. Good. That. That's what I want to hear. No, that's what we're, that's what we've been doing. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate your, uh, your question. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So. All right. So now, Back in uh, 2020, we uh, we in, we uh, sorry, I could get my train of thought here. We engaged a company called uh, Rat Rat Raptalis to do a develop a professional analysis program and system that allows us to actually develop the cost and the rates that are necessary to fund the system fund the usage uh, and meet our, our statutory requirement of, we have to collect 1.25% times what our, what our costs are for the bonds, for the bonds that we've got out on these projects. So with that and with the development, we ended up with an increased rate of 510 for the town and West Warwick with a rate of 498 that goes back to them. This was a Overall, on the town side, almost a fifty about about fifty percent increase in the town's rate. Overall, it was somewhere in the in the forty percent mark on the overall rate increase. We also set the assessments for the Arnold Road, as well as Hazard Street, Arnold Road North, and Hazard Street, on those assessments, and they were issued. So everything is all assessments are out. The rates been stabilized. We've got a a, a program now that allows us to. Uh, to have a, have a handle on what's going on. We can project out for five years, 10 years down the road on where we are and um, what's going on. So that's a brief history of getting to this point. Uh, I'm noticing we've got some more uh, questions. Frank, please state your name and uh, go with your question, sir. Uh, yeah, it's Frank um, on Arnold Road. Why are the residents responsible for paying for these assessments? And why isn't it taken out of like a general fund that we pay our property taxes in? Like why, why are the residents responsible for what goes in front of their house? I don't feel like we really had a vote or a say on the sewers when Number one, I don't use the sewer. And number two, I don't plan on hooking up to the sewer anytime soon. Why wasn't like a town general fund paying for any of this? It was uh, it was actually set up as an enterprise fund. So it's it's the cost for it are shared by the, the, the residents that are utilizing it, can utilize it, someday will be utilizing it. So it's set up to be separate and apart from the general fund. Uh, the two are not supposed to meet. They're not supposed to touch each other. And uh, 
even though it, it's a town program, it's not part of the town's general fund. So there is right now there are, we have about $670,000 a year that goes to make, pay the bonds on the West Warwick treatment plant. And out of that 670,000, 200,000 of that is being paid by the general fund. We were hoping to move more of that. That's the only amount of money that our bonding, our, our finance advisors and bonding agencies have said that we could actually pay from general fund based on the way that the sewer enterprise fund is structured. So it cannot come out of town general general funds. It has to come out of the enterprise fund, except for that uh, that amount that's going towards West Wall to pay for the uh, the improvements and the plant, and that the town is effectively twenty five percent responsible for on all of those costs. Okay. Anything else? Uh, that's it right now. Thank you very much. Appreciate you uh, coming and watching today. Thank you. Eric, you've got another question? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, assessments going out. Uh, and uh, the other day I was doing some digging and I noticed that uh, what I was told was mandatory uh, doesn't seem to be because 27 Hadger Street, they did not receive an assessment. And I did some quick math and it looks like uh, the assessments for all the other residents are going to raise like three grand, something like that, because that one uh, home was not tied in or does not have an assessment for whatever reason. I was wondering, how is that possible? It doesn't have an assessment because it doesn't have a connection point in front of its house. Uh, the decision and no one had an, no one had a connection in front of their house until the store came. I, so I, how, was that was that house invisible at the time? It's not new. Nope, that house was apparently set to go off of, I believe it's Knight Street, that it, uh, the side of the house is on the corner of Knight and Hazard. And that one was gonna be connected up on Knight and not on Hazard Street itself. Why and how that decision was made, I don't know, we've looked, we've looked into it. Mr. LeBlanc has brought this, uh, this topic up uh, where we've, we've done research on it and we have no idea how or why that's, that's come up. Glenn, do you have any input on this one or Mo? I don't know exactly which property you're talking about, but typically when um, you have a, a sewer infrastructure going in in a neighborhood, um, our consultants figure out where the connection point is, whether the existing cesspool or the existing plumbing may be on one side of the house, and they try to get it as close as possible. If the contractors either hit a, an obstacle, whether it was a, a water main conflict or, or some kind of other conflict, they would have tried to divert it to a different location. If that other it's, location was never constructed, um, then that's why they wouldn't receive an assessment. But as long as the contractors would have put a, a lateral in for them to tie in somewhere along that property, they would have received an assessment. So like an obstacle, like something in the way? Yeah, it could have been a water main or a water valve or or, or something. What about ledge? Or ledge, something. Yeah. I believe they were they had a plan to to hammer out ledge, so I don't think the ledge was the obstacle. No, uh, ledge was an obstacle because we heard it for I don't know four or five months. Mr. Um, Mr. Wilson, did you find any other properties, or were you focused um, on that street? Uh, I I can do more digging, but. It was just uh, local for the time. Okay, thanks. I don't do uh, I, all the people on corners like that get options. I mean, I'm not one, but I just figured that'd be good to know. Eric, I again, I've looked at others, try to see if we can find some others like that. How, why, I don't know. I can't give you an answer. The decision was made by with Weston and Sampson, the town's engineer. Uh, it just, it just was. Uh, Again, the thought was Knight Street was going to be done right after Hazard Street. So it was allowed to go on the, apparently from what I understand, the connection in the back would, would have been a more, a, a, a better location to, to connect in if they'd come in on Knight Street instead of Hazard Street. But uh, why, and it, again, because the project's been stopped, nothing's going on and that's why he hasn't received. We cannot assess someone that doesn't have a, the ability to connect in. And um, 
I can't give you I can't give you any more of an answer than that, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't well, know. While we're in the uh, while we're on the top of assessments, though, is there any plan still of notifying residents well ahead of time of of the assessment fees? Because I mean, I was I had no idea. There's a gentleman, at least one on this call, that has no idea what an assessment fee is. I didn't know what it was, and uh, you know, people just get blindsided still to this day by assessment fees, especially since they're you know. We're talking high twenty thousand dollar range. I was wondering if there still was a plan because I've heard talk, but I haven't seen any action, at least on my end. Well, there, there's, but, there's, Eric, there's been no action on that because the, the sewer, the sewer fund is basically. I mean, it's there's no development going on. There's no construction going on. So yes, moving forward, the mistakes that were made in the past are going to be corrected. That's what this is all about. This is why we're trying to have a program like this engage the council, let them know where the issues are. This is a new council, new members. Mr. LeBlanc was involved in a lot of the research and a lot of the effort to uh, uncover this, uh, the issues that were, were taking place or had taken place. So we're, we're moving forward. These are the things that we we are going to correct and, and make sure they don't happen again. How, how- All right, I, I, was just, I was just looking for like clarification though, like, you know, no later than six months out, you know, residents will be notified of an assessment and like maybe you know they should be given at least like an example like you know you know this house in this not this house but like this street the average assessment you know is going to be similar to yours based on you know geological surveys and their assessment fee was fifteen thousand dollars twenty five thousand dollars you know something like that yep so was it if i may go ahead sir uh, page six out of 49 of the auditor general auditor general's report actually uh, number 10 of uh, his recommendations uh, out of 18, he actually does state that he believed that notification of effect that uh, of affected homeowners, uh, they should be notified two years in advance. And I 100% back that recommendation because this is such a significant financial hardship for many, many people that I, I absolutely believe that um, the town council and uh, the sewer subcommittee should consider at least two years of uh, advance note, but it's a great question. Wilson. Yep. Thank you, Eric. Anything further? No, that's it, thanks. Thank you. I have my hand up. Okay, um, Mo's also got hers up and she beat you. That's, uh, that's doctor. fine. That's fine. Mo, do you have something you wanna, you wanna ask or, or add? No, actually, I just can't figure out how to get my hand down. <laughs> All right, I will. Uh, I will get it down for you. All right, Dr. Dixon. Uh, thank you. Um, one of the points I want to make is that the recommendation report was developed in or released in March 2019, and it is a list of recommendations. The council, once it makes a decision, what is the future of the program, will then review all documentation, including codes, ordinances, et cetera, and determine what is the appropriate notification time and all other aspects relating to the sewer program. So right now, we, we're not ready to say what needs to be changed, what has to be changed, what the change should be. We have to do a very careful deliberation and that comes after we get a lot of research, get a lot more information, and then we determine. It might actually be three years notification, not just two years notification. I don't know what the appropriate time will be. And we're gonna be really starting from scratch, looking at, looking at the program, determining its future, and then reviewing, as I said, all documentation that currently exists and determine what is the right course of action. So yes, there were some recommendations. They're already three years old. We need to move forward and we need to determine what is the appropriate course of action. And I want you uh, taxpayers, all the members of the community to understand that we are dedicated as a council to making appropriate timely decisions. Glenn, what's the typical time frame from the decision being made to go into a particular neighborhood, designing it all and actually getting the shovels in the ground to start the process? What's that time frame usually? Uh, from, from, I guess in conception, it would be about two years because you have uh, approximately 
eight months to a year of a of a design process and then uh, formalization of it um, by the time it goes out for bid and then actually starts construction, that duration is roughly two years. So it should be right in line with if we if we ultimately utilize the uh, the auditor general's recommendation, the big at the beginning of the process, people should be notified at that point on what the potential assessment could be. I think um, if you're going to notify people, you should notify them in in sequence. Two years would be like a um, like a preliminary notification because um, at the two year point, we are not we do not have any confirmation that anything will happen two years from now. So yep. at the two year point, we're guessing something may happen. So you could get feedback, you could get input, um, but it's not till about um, six months before construction would begin that we would know something is definitely gonna happen okay. because of the, uh, the funding, the financing, all the design, everything being complete and having the ability to move forward. So yes, you could, you could spend two years notifying people, getting their input, um, but at two years, it's just a plan at that point. It is not, nothing confirmed. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, I've got Mary on the line. I've got to promote her to a panelist. She's using an older version of Zoom. Give me one second, please. Mary, welcome to uh, the meeting. Please state your name. Hi, I just have a question. Are you guys forcing tie-in? Are you going to force people to tie into a project that's obviously not conducive to the town, not, you know, effective? I mean... That's the word I'm looking for. It's not profitable to the town, so are you going to start forcing tie-ins on people on top of their fifty thousand dollar assessments? To my knowledge, Mary, we have never forced someone. There is a there is a part of the ordinance that requires a mandatory connection. Mo, want to jump in on this? I don't believe anyone has ever been forced. Or anybody's been cited. That I don't believe that's ever been used. Is that correct? That is correct. We don't force anybody. It is in the ordinance that we can, but we have never utilized it and have no intention on utilizing it to my knowledge. Only because it's it's not gonna be feasible for most people, especially during COVID and on top of that assessment and on top of property taxes being outrageous and it's just not fair. Well, that's why, that's why it's never been enforced, Mary. It's in the ordinance, it's never been used. And uh, unless a council, a well, council or my other question, my other question is why do they continue to go forward with a project that is not that is putting the town backwards financially instead of bringing the town forward? It's just and it, only what 20, 10 percent of the town's going to have these sewers that are forced down their throat when the other parts of town will never see a sewer. So why are they? I feel like why are they picking on certain people? That's what this is all about to make the determination. The council makes a determination on what to do moving forward. This is all part of the process, Mary, on whether or okay. not they make the decision. I just feel like they're picking on the people in this, in certain neighborhoods and the people that live, you know, I know oh, Jamie, I think is affected by the sewer assessment, but I think he's the only one on the council. So, you know what I mean? It's like, why are they, it seems like they're just picking on people. I don't know. It's just how I feel about the town right now. Thank you. Any anything further? Mr. No, Rizika. as long as they're not going to force me to tie in, because I feel like I'm being harassed as it is, so I don't want. No, nope, they will not. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Ms. Ludwig. Um, hi, Mary. Uh, my name is Jen Ludwig. I'm in council um, member position in District Two. Um, I did want to mention that. Um, uh, a theme of kind of what what um, myself and I think my colleagues here have have been trying to show is that a problem in one area of this town is a problem for all of us. And so um, on my side, for example, I don't have a sewer running down my street, but I am vested in this process. I do want to hear your concerns and I wanna make a decision that is good for the town and not just certain parts. So thank you for your comments today. It will be helpful for all of us. 
It's just, I, you know what I mean? Like I pay my taxes, I pay a lot of taxes. And then, you know, they're going to build an apartment complex up the street from me, flood my yacht out, and then I'm going to have to pay sewer assessment, tie-in, just to have my yard flooded because they want some rich guy up the street to build apartments that are going to hurt me. So I feel like it's everything's just coming together all too much, too much. You know what I mean? Thank you for your comments, Mary. Okay, next. I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mary, thank you for your comments. Um, if perchance you feel that you're being harassed, you need to contact your uh, district representative or any one of us to, or the town manager to so indicate. We don't want to feel that our voters and our citizens are being harassed for any particular reason. Um, as you heard, Ms. Houle said that although the ordinance uh, can require a tie-in, we are not requiring any tie-ins at all. Um, so I'm glad that we were able to clarify that, but uh, none of our voters should be harassed. So please let us know if that's a situation. Thank you. Frank, you're in. Please state your name. Yeah, Frank. Um, when did you guys send the first notification out for these assessments on Arnold Road? What year was that? Mo? Um, that would have been done probably when the contract was actually done but not approved yet. I think something went out in like April, but it didn't have dollar amounts. It just said that there were, that, that the line went down and that assessments were going to be coming. There were no dollar amounts on it. If I remember, so there was nothing, I didn't send out that letter. So there was nothing in like the year, like, uh, like 2016 or anything with like plans on possibly doing sewers or anything like that. That I'm not aware of. Cause that wasn't, I, I send out the bills. I don't send out that letter. That letter would have come from, um, the town manager at the time. And I know he did send, I know they did send out something, and but I know it definitely didn't have dollar amounts on it. I know it just was a basic, the line is going to go down kind of letter. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't know what year that was? I don't. And because honestly, this is like one of the breaking points for us into wanting to sell and really get out of the town. Um, and when I went to go sell, back in 2018, we weren't able to um, take any offers because we couldn't disclose any information on the sewer assessment. Um, and it took a little while for you guys to come out with any of the numbers. And uh, the next buyers coming in, are they able to assume the assessment or does it have to be paid off with the selling of the house or they, oh, how they does assume, that work they assume that the assessments always go with the property so, so it doesn't need to be paid off it can be no, assumed no no it goes with the property it does not stay with the, the owner at the time what and about the uh the hookup does it need to be hooked up when it's being sold or can it still stay on the septic because i mean my septic's fine and i don't it, plan on hooking up but i don't know what the next buyers have to do as long as you don't have a cesspool no. And your septic is fine. There's no mandatory hookup. Okay. And it can be assessed. Uh, it can be assumed. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Anything else, sir? Or is that it? That's it right now. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Lisa. Am I unmuted? You are unmuted. You are in. Oh, okay, perfect. I have two questions. One, to follow up what Aunt Mary said, you're not mandated to tie into the sewer, but you're mandated to pay that assessment fee that is going in front of your house. Correct? Correct. Okay. And my second question goes back to what Eric was talking about on 27 Hazard Street. When we first found out the sewers were coming up Hazard Street, that was a question that was asked if we could go down 
if they were on a corner lot, if they could go down the side street, like on Knight Street or on Chopin Street, because it would be cheaper to go in that way. We were told, no, we had to be tied in on the front of the house where the address faced. So I was curious why this person would have the option to go down Knight Street versus being right on Hazard Street where the front of his house was to make his assessment cheaper if it did go up Knight Street. And now I don't believe they're going up Knight Street. So shouldn't he be charged the assessment? He, he, under, under our ordinance, he cannot be charged for the assessment because there is no, he has no ability to connect in. There, there wasn't a line put in for him to be able to connect into in front of his house. It was going to go in on, on the Knight Street side. So without that, we cannot charge an assessment on, on his property. Okay, because the question was asked to Mr. McGee at the time, and it was told that, no, we had to go through the front part of our property. It didn't matter if we were on a corner lot or not. So I don't believe that's fair. And there's a house that's on the other corner. So shouldn't she have that option too and not be charged that assessment? Because she's being charged that assessment and her house is also, the back of her house is on Knight Street. I wish I had a better answer for, for everybody on this topic. I said, Mr. LeBlanc brought it up a while ago, and uh, I have not been able to find how or why that was allowed to go on. I mean, it's... it's it, Is it a possibility that the person who owns Knight Street knows somebody on the town council at the time? I have because no... Because it's I, just I, not fair for that other house who's being charged the $60,000 assessment when he's not being charged anything that could bring down the assessments for everybody on Hazard Street. And, and, and it, would, it would have, if, there, if that house had had a, a connection in front of it, it obviously would have made it a, a cost reduction for everybody else because it's shared by, by the entire. As far as the 60, the 60 is because of the number of bedrooms in that property. That's the only reason that one is, is, is that number is because it's seven bedrooms, so. Okay. So my next question is, why can't they put the tie-in in front of his house now, that pipe? Because you'd have to dig up the road, you'd have to, you'd have to cut into the pipe. It, it would require an extensive amount of cost to do that and put it in front of him right now. Okay, I, so going forward, if your house is on a corner lot, can we make it that if the sewer is going up, on the side street of your corner lot and it's closer to your, where you're gonna tie into your sewer, you're able to go that route instead of the front of your house, which would cost more for you to tie in. This is, a, this is an issue that, that's only come up because of this, this one piece of property. But again, moving forward, these are the kinds of issues we wanna prevent, to make sure it doesn't happen again. And that's why we're listening to everybody and we're doing this meeting today to get the input so the council can make their decision on what they want to do. Do they want to move forward? And if they do, then we're going to go back and we're going to correct all of these issues so we're not, we don't face them again in the future. I apologize. Okay, I know it, it, I know it's lengthy. <laughs> my answer isn't a good answer, but I don't have, a, unfortunately, I don't have a, a real good answer on why it or how it happened. I okay, I'm just that. talking either, even throughout the town, if somebody is on that corner a lot and say they go down the front of the house, but they're not going up that side street, then everybody should have that option of saying, I don't want that pipe in front of my house. I'd rather go down that side street, even if they're not going down that side street. I you agree. understand it's, what I'm saying? I, I completely do. It should be all or nothing. I agree with you completely on that. Okay. That was my only questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. It. No, 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 I'm not ready. Mary, you uh, you have another question? You're on mute. Yes, I just wanted to um, thank the two ladies on the panel who actually, like, I feel like they actually listened to me because I don't feel like every town meeting I've been to about these apartment complexes and the sewers and everything, I don't feel like I'm being listened to. So I appreciate, I just want them to know that I appreciate them listening and really hearing me. I appreciate that. Thank That's you, what Sarah. I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Okay, go back. We have a couple more. 
Uh, give me one second. I will bring them in. Frank, you have another question? Yeah, I got uh, just just one more question that I was thinking of too. Um, my property requires a pump. I'm sure other people's do. What is the pump for and why, why do I have to get it? Uh, is it yep yeah, it's uh it's because it's it's not able to be gra gravity fed so uh glenn you want to explain the pump and the whole process you'd be uh better at that than i am so sure frank can you tell me what your address is 131 arnold road okay so uh, a portion of the arnold Lo road infrastructure is what they call a force main and that requires everybody who ties into that force main to have a pump. It's because the infrastructure in the road doesn't have a suitable slope to it to achieve a typical gravity line. So at some, some point along that road, that force main turns into a gravity line. So everybody along the gravity line typically can tie in by gravity. Everybody along the force main has to utilize a pump to pressurize that force main because it's going uphill or it doesn't have enough slope to run by gravity. Is that per house or is my house going to be, have a pump that's going to pump like say the neighbor's house next to me as well? It's yeah. Your house will pump just your house, your neighbor's house. Um, if, if the infrastructure in your road is a force main, then all your neighbors will require their own pumps and everybody will pump into that force main and that force main will lead to a gravity main at some point. But yes, all, everybody along that force main is required to have a pump. Okay, and is uh, Twin Lakes Ave, are they projected to get sewers anytime soon or it, that's like the side road that goes to Arnold Road? Again, that might Frank, want to Frank, on. Yep, Frank, at this point, the, there was there no construction planned. There is no sewer work at all being planned. And that's part of what we're doing with this meeting for the council to be able to make a decision on, on what we are going to do and what the town's going to do. So, but right now there is no plans for any construction to go on at all. All right, because where my lot is and where they said the pump is going and from where they have to run to the backyard goes completely through my deck and I asked about that and they said that the deck would need to be demolished or moved or whatever and I'm liable for putting a new deck back on on top of everything we're paying for where if I didn't have to have the sewers running down on the road my corner lot if I was able to have it on Twin Lakes Ave we wouldn't have to demolish anything. Like I said, at this point, we are we are not planning on any new construction. That'll be up to the council. Uh, so we'll see what happens on that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. We have no other no other hands in the air at this moment. Glenn, is there something you want to add on the history of, of the system? Anything you want to, any information you want to give out that you're able to give and. Uh, well, it's, 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 who wants to hear it? So I have a lot of ideas on how to move forward. I just don't know um, if the if the council um, how they feel about moving forward. So I know some of the biggest issues have been the costs, and the costs are increasing every year. There's no way around it, but the need is also increasing just as much. So a lot of people feel like. They don't want sewers. However, we know that there's a lot of neighborhoods that need sewers. And, you know, some people feel like the environmental protection part of it doesn't matter to them. Um, it matters to us, it matters to the entire town. Um, but the biggest problem is the overall cost. And from what I can tell is that the way we do things is we borrow the money, we put in the infrastructure, we charge the people along that infrastructure to recover the cost 
of the construction in addition to the interest that we uh, incur from borrowing that money. Um, the other problem is we, we tell everybody that the sewer, the sewer infrastructure you know, is designed for a lifespan of you know, 50, 100 years or you know, almost everybody's lifetime. But we recover 100% of the cost over a 20 year period. And then essentially after that assessment is paid, everybody who lives in that property after that, you know, they're the ones getting all the benefit because they're not paying anything. They've essentially bought a house with sewer infrastructure and they're just, they're just paying the, uh, the usage fees. So we, we kind of dump the entire infrastructure costs on the person there at the time. And I would like to come up with something at some point where we can spread that cost out over either a larger amount of time or in an indefinite amount of time, similar to a usage bill. So if we could increase the usage bill and eliminate the assessment, I think that makes things a lot more affordable for people. But the only way to do that is to have the capital up front to build this sewer infrastructure without borrowing it, without the pressure of having to repay it over a certain amount of time. So if there's any way to uh, find the funds to do this ahead of time, instead of borrowing it and then building, save it, save those funds up over a two or three year period, build the infrastructure, recovered over a 40 or 50 year period or over an indefinite period, similar to um, a, a monthly payment, then it eliminates that, that huge burden to people um, of that 20 year note with interest. Thank you. Kim, you have your hand up? Yes. Um, so as I've said to my fellow council members, this is a learning experience for me too, to make sure I have a fuller understanding. And I have a question about people having the sewer line in front of their home, but not tying in. Does it alleviate any of the environmental issues that we're putting these in certain places for? Um, I just am not sure how that works if people don't tie in. They don't tie in to no, know it's not. It's not alleviating those environmental issues. They still exist. Until they tie in, they will continue to exist. And yet they still, there's still all this cost associated for people, but none of the benefit of having the sewer system. Correct. They have the assessment cost that they are paying and they're not getting, uh, unless they make that decision to tie in, you're right, they're not getting any benefit out of it. So can I ask what the logic is of having people pay the assessment but not mandating that they tie in is it saving them a lot to not have to tie in it uh, it depends on the situation it can be uh tying in is uh, a costly expense and that's usually you've got, you've got to pay it out all at once to uh or take a loan for the contractor to come in and do it glenn do you have a number on what the average would be to do an average tie-in uh, they, they vary widely. It all depends on the current infrastructure of the home. If it's in the front yard, if it's in the backyard, do they require a pump? Do they not require a pump? Are there obstacles to, to maneuver around? How much uh, landscaping is involved in the yard, whether it's pools and decks? Um, but some of the easy tie-ins, you know, I would say the cheapest one is probably you know, four or 5,000 bucks where you can have a, a, a pretty pricey one at 20,000. All right, thank you. Thank you for that information. And uh, I just, I'm sorry, and I have one more question unless oh, someone in the audience- that if you did. Um, Glenn, you were just talking about coming up with the upfront money, but unless I missed it and I apologize, did you give an amount that you thought would be uh, necessary? So, so Based on the past, we've been looking at, um, you know, each sewer project that we have tackled in the past has generally run around a million bucks. So 
if there's a way to say save up three, four hundred thousand bucks a year over a three, four year period, then you have that million dollar capital in you know in the bank where you can spend that on the infrastructure without borrowing and then save another you know 300,000 bucks a year for another few years you could continue on with the sewer program with a um, say an estimated project every three to four years and we could have a goal you know say 20 years from now of how many projects we want to tackle or how many areas in town that we want to alleviate. So um, I don't think we're looking at a significant amount of projects, but we are looking at a significant amount of cost. So um, if you could, you know, come up with a concept for the next 20 years and estimate a, a project every three to four years, right? So maybe four projects over the next five years, uh, 20 years. I think that's the way to do it. So, some of our Thank earlier, you. some of our earlier projects were actually funded through HUD, in the in the uh, in the beginning of the uh, the sewer program. So they they were not coming out of uh, out of assessments at that point. Like uh, Auto Road Pump Station, that was a HUD HUD funds that were used on that one. Uh, so there were some something that we need to look at if if there is still money available. We need to do a better job of, of going after those funds if they are still out there, either state or federal. And it's something we, uh, again, if we move forward, if the program's moving forward, this would all be part of what we need to do and, uh, and not look at just going after uh, the homeowners. As, as Glenn said, I like Glenn's ideas on that. It's uh, spreading it out a little bit further. All right. Jamie, you've got uh, your hand up, sir. Uh, dovetailing off of uh, what Member Shockley said, um, she was asking about the environmental benefits. Um, if we as a council are going to go and say that we want to do this project for environmental reasons, for the town's rivers, for the town's ponds and lakes, then it begs the question, why are the homeowners on the individual streets getting selected, being forced to pay for it if it's benefiting the entire town? So I just want to make that comment. And then to Glenn's suggestion, I, I actually... 100% agree. It, we're saying that these sewer lines last 50 to 100 years. So why are we paying it off of 20? I completely understand that concept. Uh, but it goes back to your earlier comment, uh, Mr. Wazika, that we can't use general funds to pay for the sewer enterprise fund. So if we're going to save this money, we have to save it within the sewer enterprise fund. Correct. But I don't see that happening based off of current numbers. I mean, we still, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we still have the town hall annex building collateralized because of some of the debt incurred by the sewer enterprise fund. Is that correct? That is correct. So that is nearing completion, but it is still out there. Okay. Thank you. Chairwoman Dixon, do you have a, your hand up? Yes, I do. Um, Mr. Sir Skirker and I have discussed um, his recommendations, potential solutions to uh, funding a sewer program. Um, and they're very interesting. Um, I would like to suggest, however, that we would hold off really spending a lot of time on potential solutions this morning and go right into the recommendation report and understand what our town has been able to do that's good and what we still have to do. And I do promise, and I've talked to the council about this, we will have several more sessions relating to the sewer program, the sewer enterprise fund, at which time we can talk about potential solutions for our funding, potential solutions ingrained within our changes to our code, et cetera. So I, I would like to suggest that we hold off moving into solutions and debating those issues right now, and we move into the recommendation report. Mr. Wazika? No, I, I agree. Solutions now, it's, uh, it's a waste of time, actually, right now until you, the council makes a decision on what to do. Even though, even some of the, the recommendations, I'm going to go through the 18 recommendations from the Auditor General. Some of them are in the same, same situation. Until we make a decision or the council makes a decision or the town makes a decision to move forward and continue putting, putting shovels into the ground and putting pipe in the ground, a lot of this, we're spinning our wheels and wasting time and effort that can go somewhere else if we're not in fact going to expand the system other than 
natural growth by, based on the, where the pipes are already in. Uh, I'll start with the first one. Explore if any sewer program costs can or should be supported through the town's general fund. That was recommendation number one, as I've already gone into on that. We currently pay about $670,000 a year to the West, to West Warwick for, uh, for bonds and repairs on the, on the station. Uh, that money has been, they've been, has determined that we can pay that from the general fund. I began that process two years ago on moving 200,000 of that into a line item in the general fund. Uh, unfortunately, last year where I was hoping to move another 200, that's, we failed to get a budget. So that, uh, that money obviously hasn't been in it. If we can move the rest of that 460, 460, 470 over in the general fund, at some point, it will help to take a little bit of the pressure off the, uh, the rate payers for the, uh, for the sewers. So that is uh, something that we, we've begun the process. Hopefully we can complete and move all of that 670 over there. And those numbers will start going down in the next couple of years on what we owe West Warwick because those bonds in West Warwick, I think they, uh, some of them start coming off in, in 26, 25 or 26. Some of those start to, uh, to uh, sunset. Consider offsetting the town sewer assessment liability for connecting town buildings to the sewer system against the general fund advances that are not likely reimbursable in the near term. If such offsets are not applied, charge interest to the town sewer assessment payable to the sewer fund. All right, we have actually a couple of back in September and I believe it was October or November. We actually, our total assessment for town buildings to the sewer, the sewer enterprise fund was just slightly more than $2 million. At the time, we, uh, there was about a $3.2 million in loans to the sewer enterprise fund from the town's general fund. We have since offset that and it will be reflected in this year's financials. And we paid off those assessments by, by, by bringing down the amount of money that was owed to the town from the enterprise fund. Uh, it is currently listed at about, uh, I've, got, I've got the numbers, it's, uh, I believe it's $1.2 million where we're down to a thereabouts that, uh, that the town is now owed. With the increase of the sewer rates, uh, the usage rates, that money will begin getting paid back to the town, the rest of it, uh, the following year in, in uh, the next fiscal year. We're, we're basing on, on getting some of it back and over the next 10 years to do the payout, to pay back to the town. So that's in there. Build sewer assessments for recently completed sewer work to provide cash flow to meet some needs. All right, these are the Honor Road and Hazard Street. Those have been met. We've, got, we've, we've made those assessments and put them out and uh, we are collecting. All right. Erect a minimum base sewer use charge to be applied one year after the initial sewer assessment when the actual connection and use is not commenced. So basically what, what this, this recommendation was, a minimum use fee, which we are looking at, and again, will require an ordinance change, but they're also recommending a, uh, the Auditor General recommended a minimum use fee for everyone, whether they're connected or not. So that's something, again, that's something that the town councils of the future, as well as by utilizing the, uh, the, sewer, the sewer subcommittee on coming up with changes that are needed to our ordinances. That's, uh, that needs to be done. Revisit negotiated uh, reserve capacity component of the intermunicipal agreement. We have done that. We have met several times with West Warwick in an attempt to bring those, that capacity level down. They have absolutely no desire to, to buy back or take back any of that capacity. We've met several times. The, there is no, no desire there to do it. The only other option we would have at that point would be to basically end the contract and we will more than likely not be allowed to be able to connect anyone else to the system because we will have no additional capacity to do that. So again, that's is it's there's a lot there. It was intended because of when it was purchased, uh, when it was set up of the sewer program expanding, and that hasn't happened as quickly as as was anticipated. 
with this, we have been in negotiations with another community that may be looking at, is looking at uh, taking some of our reserve capacity because uh, they've got some projects going on. So there is a possibility of getting rid of some of that. Again, we have to look at and analyze just how much we're willing to give up and what our future needs are. So that, again, if we're moving forward, that has to all be addressed. Reassess the board. Mr. Lepnick has his hand up. I'm sorry, Jamie. Only because it's about this uh, particular recommendation. Oh, oh. Um, I just, I think it's important to highlight that the capacity that we currently have is costing this town millions of dollars. And, and the reason why, Mr. Wazika, as you know, um, when they have to do an upgrade at that treatment plant, we own, because we own that capacity, we actually have to pay 25% of whatever the upgrade is. Well, how much was the last upgrade? Do you, do you remember how much the last upgrade was? And I think it was in 15 or I think, I think it was 15 I or 16, but. I think it was 22 million, if I'm not mistaken, that that upgrade was somewhere. And that my point off. there is I'm, I just want to call out that because of this contract, the entire town is essentially a payer on all of that debt. And I just right. wanted to call that out, that um, this agreement and the uh, amount of capacity that we've had this agreement in place for over 40 years, and we're still only using about one tenth of that capacity. You are correct, sir. Just wanted and to highlight that. I, I, I agree. This is, again, one of the problems of the past. What I'm trying to do here, though, is we can't move forward if we keep living in the past, and I'm trying to move us forward. And yes, we need to learn of all those mistakes that we've made there so we don't make them going forward. My calculations right now, I'm, at, I've got a, I'm seeing about $5.2 million that we still owe on those on the our percentage of the bonds for West Warwick. There's about $5.2 million that we've got. Right, you, you made the comment that um, bonds are about to fall off, but we also don't know when the next upgrade is gonna be and how much it's gonna cost us. No, we don't. And that's that's one of the issues. You're right. You are yeah. absolutely correct. So going forward, it's still going to be an issue, even though it's a past issue. It is. That's why, like I said, we are looking at in the attempt to possibly get rid of some of that capacity if, if we can. Uh, again, the they, decisions were made 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and we're, we're living with them and we can't we can't change it. So we've just got to move forward and, and, and do the best we can to mitigate the the effect of, the, of those bad bad choices or, or decisions made then. And I wouldn't say it was a bad choice because center of New England was projected to be a monstrous amount of capacity needed down there. And that project with, with 08 and everything, it just blew up and, and we never got to the point of where it was supposed to get to. So, I mean, that's a big, big issue with why the amount of capacity that we've got on that plant. And remember that plant was expanded based on our need as well. So, I mean, rightfully so, we have a responsibility on that. We can't just walk away from, from what we've done. And all we have- I, we I, I totally hear you and I agree with you, but back in 1981, when that agreement was signed, Senator New England wasn't even a thought. And we, no. and we grabbed all of this capacity. So you are, wanted to- You are correct. Stuff. I'm not gonna argue that point with you, sir. All right, anything further? No, that was it. All right, uh, Mrs. Shockley, I noticed your hand is up. Yes, thank you. Um, can I just be clear? So West Warwick passed his bonds for the um, sewer to be upgraded. Uh, and then we as a whole town pay on them. Is that correct? We, the sewer Hello? enterprise fund pays on them. We have moved 200,000 of that debt over to the general, over to the, to the general fund. Okay, yeah. so that, it's only that small amount that gets paid for by the entire town, the entire population of Coventry. Correct, 200,000 currently under okay. our, our financial, our bond council, as well as uh, our fi financial advisor have both determined that we can move that entire 670,000 in, in, in bond payment or debt payment to West Warwick over to the general fund if Okay. The council has a desire to do that. Again, okay. taking a little load off and spreading it out to the rest of the yeah. town. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, right. Just wanted to make sure I understood. Um, another question is, you know, I know that the town of West Warwick doesn't want to change anything in our contract, but have we looked at just trying to fight a bad contract? Like would a judge um, allow us to change this contract in any way? Because it's just a bad contract for the town of Coventry. Like there are certain instances where a contract is so bad, it's almost um, malpractice. We, we entered into that contract and requested and, requ and asked for that amount, that percentage yep. of usage. It, I know. So, I mean, as far as we asked for it, we've got what we asked for. Yeah, so I, I know. To get but back it was, judge, I mean, if it's possible, but again, I'm not an attorney. Yeah. But no, again, me neither. I just wasn't sure if we'd oh. looked at, I mean, 40 years ago, we made, seems like we made a bad ask. Um, and we have yeah. been stuck with it for 40 years. So I just wasn't sure if, you know, if a judge looked at the, how that contract was put together, it, it just seems whoever, whoever planned that contract did a poor job. And I know I don't want to look back in time either, but just to see if we can change it moving forward. Um, and then my only other question was, are there any other services in our town that are just put on individuals? And I know the fire department is kind of a by section of town. You pay for your fire department. Um, but like the schools are only used by a certain amount of the town, but the whole town pays for them. Um, I don't use the senior center, but I pay for the fact that we have one. So are there any other um, like services that we have in segment of the town or is the sewer um, kind of a one-off in that way? Well, it's, it's a one-off right now. It's, it's, a, it's an enterprise fund. And as such, it's, it's designed- yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I know what an enterprise fund is. <laughs> it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the limited users. It's the same thing if we were looking at a, 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 a dam, what the heck do they call it? A dam, a uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm losing district. my mind here right now. Please? District? Yeah, damn district. It would be the same kind of thing on that if, if we did Johnson's Pond and we charge a certain amount to the people that are around the pond, that are on the pond to use. So it would be the same type of concept that that, that would be. Uh, it's But it's it's only the people that are involved in it. Uh, that's, the way, that's the way the legislature set it up. That's the way it's not designed to be going out. And, and I'm pretty sure... Just about every other community that's good, that has it, it's all the same way. It's a separate, it's like a water district. They're the same way. It's 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 only to the users. So the costs yeah. are, are given to just the users. Okay, I just I just wanted to understand, yep. you know, why it was kind of a one-off. So thank you. Thank you. So we have additional uh, hands up on the attendees. I'd like to bring them in. Lisa, you're uh, you have another question. Um, well, I was just gonna. Oops, I think I hit my thing by mistake, my hand. Sorry. Okay. You're all set then? Yes. Thank you. All right. Joshua, do you, uh, you have a question? Sure. Thanks, Mr. Wazika. Josh Clements, 10 Gentry Farm Drive. Full disclosure, I'm not affected by any sewer fees, assessments, and whatnot, but I have an interest in the improvement of the sewer program for the betterment of the town. Um, I guess, are there any more discussion on the, the benefits and how the sewer system benefits the town, benefits the environment? Uh, obviously, we play a large role in the state. I mentioned it before, seventh largest town should have an effective sewer system uh, and not be as rough shot or mismanaged as it has been in the past. So maybe more focus on the benefits. Benefits of it are, are obvious in, in a commercial zone, a, uh, an industrial zone. People aren't going to want to. People won't move in if they're if they're using a, a septic system. They're not going to build a big box store here when they if they don't have a, a sewer system to connect into. Industry is the same way. I mean, there's just things that people the cost associated with it are just too large, and, and they need to. So sewer sewers have they their, their use. They have a benefit. The environmental issues are monstrous. We've got all of our lakes and ponds and, and rivers and streams that we've got. Set the old uh, the old cesspools are are, are mm -hmm. leaking. All of those causing causing issues and polluting all of our, our waterways. So I mean, there's a there's a huge benefit to doing it. 
unfortunately, it has to, it, the whole thing has to be weighed, the cost versus the benefit. And um, in certain areas, it is definitely worth it. Uh, to bring sewers out to, say, the western section at this point, would, would there wouldn't be a benefit to it. Then the distance between the connections are so far, it would be a monstrous cost to bring out there. But where we are and where we're trying to put them in, there's, there's definitely a need and definitely a, a, a huge benefit to the town. Tioga Avenue is where I'd love to see the completed all the way down to the town line. And I've spoken to Mr. LeBlanc about this. That's an area that needs to be done ASAP. There's a, a lot of property there that could be utilized and I think would get utilized if we had sewers in that, that system. I know uh, uh, the cigar lounge that opened up recently on, 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 uh, on Tayo, that was a very expensive septic system to put in for, to be able to open that place because of what was required because of where the water the water table and everything else, extremely expensive. It would have been much better to have a tie-in to, to the sewers if it had been run down there. So uh, yeah, that's uh, there are areas and we need to we need to look in that. And again, if we make the decision to move forward, the council and the public, then that's all what's got to be evaluated and uh, and and done. Any additional? I'm certainly no. Okay. I was going to say I'm certainly certainly not advocating for the extension out to Western. Um, I mean, maybe when it when it makes sense, sure. Um, but I definitely would support another bond referendum or, or something that can get a capital fund established to pay for the services and I guess utilities that are required in a, in a growing community such as ours. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, you're on. Good morning, everyone. Um, I was just asked, wanted to ask if those asked to, um, renegotiate the IMA have happened within the, within the past year or so. Um, I'm only asking because I know we don't want to live in the past just because members of the public were met by previous members of the council saying they'll say no, it's not worth our time. I'm trying to think the last time we, we had a contact with them. It's probably been maybe 12 to 18 months ago was the last the last time we, we had a meeting with them directly involving the 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 um, the capacity issue and trying to get them to reduce take back right. out of that capacity so it's been 12 to 12 to 18 months 12 to 16 months in that range okay i think it might be worth trying to look into again because as previously stated if they perform an upgrade we're on the hook for a lot of money thank yep. you for your time no thank you sir for your question thank you for listening i think the short story on the uh, capacity issue is we need to find a buyer we have an agreement, we're stuck with the agreement. We own a certain amount of capacity. We need to find a buyer to, to purchase the leftovers of what we don't want. And we have been in negotiations on that. Or, so hopefully that will uh, bear fruit at some point in the near future, not too distant. And, and that will allow us to get rid of some of that. And just for the listeners, uh, we do have 2.25 million gallons of usage per, per day. day that we can send to West Wolk and we're using less than one or just about one tenth of it. And we have Mary has another question. Mary, you're back in. Hi, did I hear you say that you were going to, you had the, Capability of charging a minimal sewer usage fee, whether you were tied in or not? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That's not what I said. That was one of the recommendations of the Attorney General's uh, review of our system. It, all right. And if that did go through, would it be anybody that has a sewer line, and or is it the whole town that's going to have to pay a minimum sewer use? Or is it just the people that got this uh, sewer system thrown down their throat is it just us or is it going to be the whole town picking up that tab so it would be if, if it's benefiting the whole town by having sewers and you're going to charge us a minimum usage fee it's not helping the environment because we're still not using it you're just collecting money do you know what i'm saying so how is that benefiting do you know where i'm coming from how is that benefiting the environment, if we're just paying, but not actually using, you know what I'm saying? But you're going to charge just the people who had this thrown down their throat, but not the whole town. I'm confused by that. So is that something they plan on doing? Ma'am, it is just a recommendation from the Auditor General. That's it. That is, it's not, uh, it's again, moving forward, that's something that will be evaluated 
and determine. And non- what would that fee be? Again, Thousands of dollars. Again, ma'am, we don't. We have no idea at this point. Again, it's going to be something that would have to be evaluated by the council, by the sewer subcommittee, and uh, ordinance changes made to actually enact that. So that would be, again, it's up to the council. And right now, until they make a decision to move forward, then it's it's just just that a recommendation by the attorney uh, order the general. Okay, well, I just hope they take that into consideration that these poor people that got this pipe thrown down their throat yeah, are going to be forced to pay for the benefit of the whole town, even though it's not going to benefit anybody because no one's tied in because personally, I can't afford it. So I will, you'll be putting me out of my home because I have Lyme disease and MS and everybody thinks, all right, let's just put it on that poor lady. You know what I mean? It's not really fair. So I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, Mrs. Dixon. Uh, one brief comment. Um, I understand for a, the cost associated with excess capacity in our contract with West Warwick. <clears throat> and there has been some suggestion here that we should look for a buyer for excess capacity. No decision is an easy one because even if you could find a buyer, you have to make a decision based on objective data just how much capacity you actually want to sell or get rid of. And you have to understand the future growth of the community. So I just want to mention that um, lots, of, lots of potential solutions here, but nothing is going to be easy for the council and it's going to require a lot of data and analysis in order to make an appropriate decision. Thank you. Eric. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, so uh, in regards to the uh, intermunicipal agreement, over a year ago, I made a documentation request with West Warwick regarding that intermunicipal agreement in regards, you know, specific, specifically to the uh, operational costs, the amount of Coventry, and uh, the flow that Coventry sends to West Warwick because it states in that IMA that West Warwick will keep track of that. Now, they, uh, they basically gave me the runaround, and then when I filed the complaint with the attorney general's office, they said that everything was destroyed in the floods. But those floods were in 2011, or whatever day it was, whatever year it was. So basically, if everything was destroyed in the floods, they should have that information from you know 2012 or whatever to the present day. They still haven't given me any of those documents that I requested, and there's actually an open, it's public information, but there's a open uh, case with the attorney general's office against West Warwick in regards to this APRA violation. So if they're not, if they're in violation of the IMA, shouldn't that give this town leverage to, to negotiate it? Because clearly the 25% that we're spending on upgrades and all the other stuff that we're, all the other money that we're just dumping into their facility we're paying for 25% of all those upgrades and everything, but we're nowhere near 25% of the capacity that they receive. Yep. I, you, you, you put the request in with them. They haven't get, they haven't provided the documents. They haven't proven. I mean, yep. There's no, they're not in violation of the, inter, uh, the municipal agreement. They're in violation of not providing you the documents to it. Yeah, but if, if it turns out that they do not have a record of of just one aspect of what that IMA states, the operational cost, the amount to commentary, the flow that they've received, that they don't have those recorded, isn't that a violation of the agreement? Because it states that West Warwick will maintain records of those things. So, uh, I, we may have gotten those records at the same time than when they were first produced. I don't know. Again, one of my problems that I'm finding is there was the biggest issue that we're facing here is we have no one leading this sewer enterprise fund. It's it's broken up with a number of people, each having little pieces of it. The di- the data and documents have been broken up, and they're in different different departments and divisions within the town. I've tried to compile a lot of it, um, to so we have a uh, centralized location on it. And it's something that, uh, again, moving forward, we're, we'll be doing more of getting all of this. Uh, I will be looking into seeing if we got, we should have gotten all of those documents when the, when the costs were, do, were, were done, calculated. 
That's part of what the agreement says, and they would have done it. But uh, where it is here, we'll see what I can. I'll see what I can find on ours. Uh, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, I did an IMA. I did a APRA. Excuse me. Yep, with West w- through West Warwick. Yep. Asking for that information. Yep. They refused to give it to me. They just, you know, they completely ignored me. Then once they exceeded the uh, the legal amount of days to give me the information or request an extension. Then they said that uh, it was going to cost me over eight hundred dollars to get it, in which you know. Then there's a law saying that if they exceed that amount of days for the APRA, they can't charge you a retrieval fee. So after I sent that to them, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, it was destroyed in the flood. So like they had excuse after excuse after excuse. But the main reason I asked for that APRA through us work is, it's going to show the amount of flow that. Coventry has sent to them or we have sent to West Warwick and it's going to show the amount that we've paid which is we know 25 percent but it's going to it's going to show that we're paying 25 percent when we're only using you know one percent of that 25 percent over all the years since 1980 whatever so it's going to show the gross overpayment that's going to be the data that's you know going to show how grossly Coventry is overpaid for this IMA. Eric, we're, we're all aware that we've, we've overpaid. I mean, that's part of what's going on. We know exactly how much we're sending them every year. We get charged on it. That, uh, again, it's a given. We know that uh, that's happened. It's based on that that volume, and there's nothing we can do on, uh, with that. People well, wouldn't, West Warwick, wouldn't West Warwick be in violation of that IMA if they're not keeping those records? Because I requested those records, and they still haven't produced them. And they've also I, haven't produced them to the attorney general who requested them. You're right, but that your your issue is with them, and whether or not they do or don't have it, I don't know. I have no idea what's going on, what they what they've done, what they haven't done. We are okay. Well, let's let's say they don't have it, or they don't have part of it. Doesn't that put them in violation of the IMA? Not if they've already provided that data to us at an earlier point. If they provided the data to us, we've got it. And like I said, right. we we will have it. Any of the stuff that's going on in that, we've gotten we've gotten copies of all of it. So. All right. And another thing about, I hate bringing up the past, but with the gross mismanagement that everyone keeps bringing up, is there any accountability for these sewer subcommittee members and town council members from the past that just decimated this town financially? How do you, uh, the things that were done in the past, in most cases were done, they did what they thought was the right thing, and whether it was or not, hindsight, proven that well, someone wasn't seems like they did what was the easy thing well i mean there were sewer sewer rates that weren't weren't brought up for, for seven years we sat with an older rate for seven years that never got that never got increased we had assessments that were not based on actual construction costs they they you know they they they, they did what they did though for what they thought was best for the town it wasn't they didn't they weren't trying to to take advantage of the town they weren't trying to take advantage of the citizens the decisions they made, they made what they thought was the, for the best for us, for the town, for the people, and, and even as far as not charging what needed to be done. Were they political reasons they, were, they weren't charged? More than likely. I don't know. We don't know what was in their mind and, and, and why they made those decisions. But I, I don't, I, the, the, order, the order to general, when he looked into this whole process, one of, the concern, one of the thoughts was that there may have been something done that shouldn't have been done, something illegal, None of that was ever found. It was there were honest mistakes that may have been made that some people would consider mistakes, but there was no criminal activity that they found. You know that. Uh, so yeah, I, I I disagree with that statement that they 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 did it because I don't think they did. I think they did what they did for the for the best interest of our town, and it may have been the wrong thing to do, but I think it was done because they they were concerned. Like thirty thirty five hundred dollars for an assessment was nowhere near what was costing that. But it's reasonable. Well, it, not for the cost associated with putting it in. It, it wasn't. As far as even as far as some of the abatements that were done, they were done. I, you, they were done what they thought was best again to get a developer in and get the development done. That's not. It's not a, something illegal. It's just a decision they made. Well, and it's I a, never. I never said anything regarding criminality or no, legality. I, know, but, I was just I know, saying but accountability. I'm, I'm just emphasizing that because that that has come out and people have made those accusations. And they never have, and there, there's no, there's nothing there. The people have done what they've done. 
out, out of a desire to do the right thing. Personally. Right. Anything else, sir? No, that's it. All right, thank you. Okay, we have no one else with a hand up at this point. Would we like to continue on the Auditor General's report? Yes, yes, we do. Okay, where did I leave off? <laughs> Anybody remember? Uh, are you on? Are you on seven? You did number. You did okay. number six. You're on uh, yeah. number seven. Right, number, number, seven. seven. Yep. number seven. Reassess the importance of the sewer program to the town's overall growth, economic development, and health and safety objectives. Utilize the updated assessments to guide various near-term and long-term decisions regarding the sewer program. This one is something that, this is, I think, the main piece of what the council needs to do. And we work from there. That's what we have to do. It hasn't been done at this point. Again, this is up to, we've got a new council, we've got new people. And uh, one of my goals would be, because of, this obviously is gonna be staying with me as we transition from, uh, to the new town manager. I really want to take advantage of our uh, sewer subcommittee and engage them again back into the process the way they haven't been in a number of years and get them involved with doing these doing this base work and, and the analysis and and coming up with with if if again the council decides to move forward with this and we make the decision to advance the system I want to take advantage of the people that we have and not just uh, use them to get the uh, sewer uh, tie-in authorization. So. Mr. Rosica. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I joined the sewer subcommittee, I think it was in the spring of 2018. Um, and I was a little bit new to town back then. Um, but at the time I had just looked into, you know, where, where were areas of town that, that we possibly needed assistance. So when I first joined that committee, I didn't know a whole lot. Um, I had requested from Stephanie in um, just background on what that sewer subcommittee did. And I got the, what I'll refer to as the bylaws. Um, I don't know the official term for it on, on what the committee should do. There, there's a whole list of, of items that, you know, we should be focused on rate this, you know, um, uh, more than just tie-ins, for example. Um, and I'd say probably I don't know, 99% of what I've done in that committee has been tie-ins. So um, there's certainly there's certainly some sort of disconnect between what we said the committee was gonna do, at least on my time. I know that there's members that on that subcommittee that have been there much longer than me. Um, but at least during my time, it feels like mostly what we've done is tie-in requests. So I, I certainly agree with the with the sentiment and the recommendation that we, we need to figure out who's doing what. Um, and I believe you mentioned earlier a comment about ownership. And I believe it was, I think it was Mr. Wilson who said something about accountability. Um, it's definitely something that we've talked about uh, or I have talked about, you know, um, with Mr. Rizika, with Mr. LeBlanc, with Mr. Skirka, just in terms of having a point of contact who knows all the pieces um, so I, I certainly understand where some of these recommendations are, are coming from. And I um, personally have seen the need um, for this particular recommendation if we decide to go forward to be addressed. Yep, I agree. The, 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 the big uh, one, again, one of the many big, big problems I've, I've seen with this is that lack of a contact person, the lack of a point person to lead this, get everything together, combine it all, work as again, finance director, DPW director, uh, tax assessor, uh, tax collector, tax assessor, Stephanie in. I mean, we've got people all over the place. Monique, Karen, they all got a piece of this. And, and we, we just, there's no central control on it. And, and, and that's been part of the problem that we faced over the years. People move on. There's no consistency. We need, we need to get that in. One way or another, that needs to be in place, whether we move the the program forward and, and start increasing it or just maintaining what's on here. It has to be done. We have to engage the sewer subcommittee. One of the problems I've noticed with that, what the charter says their, their, their role is and what the resolution mm -hmm. says their role is. There's a, there's a big disconnect on that, on the, on the two. I, I, there's a lot of dedicated people on that board. I, I personally want to see them utilized 
and their, their knowledge utilized to, to bring this forward. I think sewers are a necessary part of our town. To let it sit and go stagnant, we can't do. We can't just let it fall apart. We have to maintain it. We have a legal liability. We have a liability to pay these, these bonds. We currently have principal alone of, of $20 million between the West Forward piece of four, $5 million in our, our bonding at about $14, $15 million on town bonds for various uh, construction projects on this. That's principal only. Never mind the interest on, on this. So all total, I believe it comes out to almost $25 million between principal and interest we owe. We've got to pay that. We have an obligation. We've got we've got some pumping stations that are that are already exceeding their life expectancy. They're they're in. We we just had a review done of one that's indicating it's it's 40 years old. And uh, it should have it should have been replaced or pots and, and upgraded 20 years ago. It hasn't been done. There's been no funds to do that. So we've got to do all of these things and we, we've got to take it because if something something goes amiss and something breaks down and we start spewing human waste, we are going to have a, a, a huge problem. So we've got this. It's our liability. It's our town's liability. This is ours. We have to make sure it's maintained and, and repaired and, and done what needs to be done. The, the best way to do that is to expand it, get more users in. Get people where the where the cost is shared by more and not just the few. We've got a thousand seventy one bills that we put out right now. That's it. That's how there's more users than that because several of them have um, multiple multiple parties involved. And I think Mo, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we got about what eighteen hundred thereabouts individual users into the system, but less than eleven hundred bills. We need to expand that out so that cost is distributed to more people and not to the small, small number we have. The benefits, as I said, the industrial, commercial, all of that will, will, will expand. That land, with development going on all over the place and commercial development going on, we've had very little on Tioga Gap. And I think, I think the biggest piece problem with that is, again, we don't have the ability, they don't have sewers to tie into. So I, I'd like to see all of that corrected. And this all comes in under past problems, current problems. We've got, I'm looking at the numbers, I mean, financially, yes, it's going. It's it's going to be tough. We uh, last year's budget, last year's sewer sewer fund. Uh, the numbers are not finalized yet with the audit because it's, that's still in play. But on a cash basis, not an accrual, which we've switched over. We've we've eliminated that. On a cash basis, we were positive by about fifty four thousand dollars. We were projecting more closer to three hundred thousand dollars last year. We have we saw the effect of reducing down that interest rate. That was brought down from the, the six percent down to the the adjusted daily floating that we've now got, and that caused about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or so in lost revenue to the town. It's got to be paid. These bills have to be paid. So when we bring that a cost down, we still have to find the funds somewhere to to maintain and, and pay those bills and pay pay the bonds. We have an obligation on all of that. So I mean that's but we need so, some Mr. bills Zika to charge. I, I think I'm, uh, I think I would just want to make one clarification though. Um, we do want to figure out where we make up a cost, but that doesn't necessarily mean it needs to go on the taxpayer. I agree. So, I, I didn't um, say that. I didn't say yeah, that. No, I, I agree. I, that's why I just wanted to clarify because um, I think we have, I think we have a lot to discuss from the council once we get through um, through this session on how we kind of want to proceed. Um, but I, I, I'm trying to be thoughtful in terms of some of the problems that we're seeing. Um, and certainly the, I don't, I'll just publicly state, I don't want to multiply a problem um, by building more lines and getting more people on the system. So um, maybe what we can do is um, continue focusing on what are the recommendations and what have we done before we keep talking about where we possibly put sewers like on, on Tioga Avenue. So I'll just, I'll just recommend that we, <laughs> that we come back to the problem as opposed to keep talking about where we might put them. Well, I think Mr. Wazika is trying to get through the recommendation list. So Mr. Wazika, why don't you continue? I think you've just talked about number seven. Why don't you move on to number eight? Yep. And, and a lot of the, and a lot of these recommendations are all 
all <laughs> pertain to if we move forward. A lot of these are not, you know, the ones we we've, we've we've taken care of, the things we fixed, we fixed because they were they were good for the now. But a lot of this is for the future, and then we need to, if we move forward, then we need to start. We need we will implement these. Implement an information program to educate taxpayers on how the sewer program is integral to the long-term growth and viability of the town. Needs to be worked on. Increase the number of uh, system users customers strategically by targeting the expansion of the system where there is the strongest environmental need, homeowner interest, and a reasonable balance of construction costs to the number of connection users gained. The one of one of the, and again, that alone talks about that that section prior point there's almost 300 almost 300 houses on the upper and lower section of of uh, of, Briar, of the Arnold road line that sewer pump station that that needs to be built over there puts a substantial number of people into the system uh again tayo gab bringing it all the way down that's that's the areas where this would be and that's we have looked at those and what would work and what Future expansion beyond that, that's something that has to be uh, Discuss. thoroughly analyzed. Ensure oh, near- Mr. Wazika. Yes, sir. Just, just one comment. Um, I've heard in the past that this section is very interested in sewers and this section is very, you actually made a, uh, I think you made a comment that Briar Point, those residents are very interested. I, I think we just got a, a point of clarification. I, I would like to send out a notice saying estimated costs are X. Tie-in costs are Y, user fees are Z. Are you still interested? I think that needs to happen, and then we can say whether or not these residents are really interested. Just wanted to call that out, Mr. LeBlanc. I think before anything is done, anywhere that is that is something that has to go out to them. We need we need we need citizen engagement in this. We shouldn't just we analyze where they need to go. We look at what ha what what's best for environmentally. All of that, and then we also have to have the input from the people that live in that area. Do they want agree. it? Do the majority want it? Do they not want it? We don't force. We can't unless there's an uh, a pressing environmental need that that mandates that we have to put into an area. I I, I think that the, the citizens should have a a big say on whether or not that moves into their neighborhood. Again, short of the environmental issue, because there are. I know a lot of a lot of around Briar Point. There's a lot of septic, uh, a lot of old, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cesspools. cesspools and not septic systems over there. There's leaching that goes on. We monitor. We've monitored Lake Tayog all summer long for the levels, and and we do see we've had issues in the past where those levels have skyrocketed, and we've had to shut it down because of that. So we know there is a pressing need in that area, as well as we have had substantial number of homeowners ask us when are we getting it we need it our systems are failing we don't want to put we don't want to put a system in if we're going to get the sewers we'd rather have the sewers because of the the, the cost on doing those systems over there so again all of that's going to be looked at I, I agree completely we can't go into this haphazard like we we like appears to have been done in the past and it really wasn't but we need to do more citizen engagement and I think that's one of the biggest issues we we face moving this forward. Okay, ensure long-term, uh, near-term and longer-term sewer expansion plans are incorporated into the town's overall planning efforts. Enhance transparency and communication of any sewer system expansion by requiring notification to affected homeowners at least two years in advance of the actual construction schedule to allow that information to be considered by the homeowners contemplating installation of a new individual sewer disposal system. So what we've, we've spoken about. Uh, number 11, uh, explore options to manage and reduce the high cost of sewer assessments on homeowners to include review the components included in the total project construction cost allocated to homeowners. Consider eliminating street paving costs, police details, and any extraordinary unanticipated construction costs. We eliminated the police paving, police detail, and paving costs from both the Honor Road and uh, hazard street uh, assessments so they were removed on, on that again moving forward we would be doing the same thing we are looking again the ordinance change definitely do well uh, to lock it in but i think the ordinance our sewer ordinance needs to be attacked as a whole and not done piecemeal 
to do a minor change here and there isn't the answer to what we need to do. Again, if we're going to move forward, we have to analyze that, that whole ordinance, come up with, a, with, with the corrections that need to be done, and then move that forward. Again, this is where the sewer subcommittee will have a huge part of, of, of developing that. So at least how I envision it. Be taking your lead, though. Mr. Rosica. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want to be conscious that we, some of us may feel slightly differently. Um, so I'll give you an example. I don't think that we need to do this massive review of an ordinance every time. If there's something that we know is clearly not working, or if there's something that we know should be changed, we should be able to bring that forward as an ordinance change. So um, in, in my opinion, uh, if we decide that we're moving forward, I wouldn't want to just limit us to one time ordinance review. If there's things over time that we find, I would be interested in bringing that forward. And we can certainly continue that conversation after um, you know we start the solution discussions. Oh, I agree. Uh, the thing is that there are a lot of changes that we already know need to be done. I'd rather do them as a group. We can save our cost associated with, with advertising, mailing, or anything that we've got to do on it. We can save that cost by doing a single upgrade of the, of the whole ordinance. And then as new issues develop, we do those on an as needed basis. But I think because of the fact that we know that we are facing a number of, of back issues and problems with the ordinance that need to be changed, this first initial should be done to include all of them and save as much money as we can and not put it out one at a time. That's why I was suggesting that. But we always, you know, the need for any change down the, down the road should be addressed as it comes up. I agree completely. Okay, explore options to manage and reduce the high cost of sewer uh, assessment on homeowners to include subsidizing the sewer assessment by recovering a portion of those costs from sewer use charges or a directly subsidized proportion of the cost from the town's general fund or other non-sewer fund source. We've, we've done that. Uh, we instituted the Waterman Fisk Assistance Program and utilizing funds from there with a program that uh, John Arnett spent a lot of time on and coming up with. And we, we've we assisted, I don't have the exact number off the top of my head. Mo, do you remember how many people between uh, Hazard Street and Arnold Road that we assisted with that? Mo? Oh. No? All right. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. I should have prepped on have. No, I'm good. I'm going to say at least, I'm going to say at least six. Because I know from the first round, it. I know I just did one. And no. I know from the first round, I, I want to say like five. Okay. They could, they could be a couple of more, but I know it's, it's, it was a good amount. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone that was eligible, we sent letters out to, we did, we made and uh, made sure that everybody is aware of all of that, that assistance that was available through there. So we have, is it enough? I'd like to see more. And again, moving forward, that's something that we can all discuss. You can discuss. Explore options to manage and reduce the high cost of sewer assessments on homeowners to include reducing the interest rate uh, charged on sewer assessments to approximate the town's actual cost to borrow. Again, an, an issue that we have resolved, uh, partially through us, partially through uh, a state uh, change, but we have instituted that where we are 0.5% over our actual cost. And because of the fact that our bonds are all different, different interest rates, we use a formula to calculate the average interest rate and then the 0.5% the over that. Uzika, uh, yes, Mr. Clements uh, from the public does have his hand up. Just want to call that out. All right, excellent. Thank you, sir. Joshua, we got you back into the meeting. Oh, I, I, I could have waited. Um, I just I just wanted to again highlight, right, the sewer system will benefit the town as a whole. I think you've highlighted it well, Ed, right? Commercial development. If we increase commercial development, we increase growth in targeted areas of the community, then it could reduce the tax burden across the town. Uh, theoretically, and it would benefit uh, the greater community. I think echoing some of the concerns of the Johnson's Pond community, right? The pond is beneficial to the 
the greater majority of the town, even though a few people are paying cost in terms of property taxes, et cetera. Thank you very much. Okay. Explore options to manage or reduce the high cost of sewer assessment on homeowners to include increase the availability and awareness of lower cost financing options for homeowners. Uh, that uh, our, uh, our interest rate on that, uh, I mean, uh, I have, I have an issue with anybody doing anything other than doing the way we do it. Because if you go out and you take out some type of private financing to pay off that assessment, that assessment, as we spoke about earlier, stays with the house until it's fully paid off. So if someone were to go out and they, and you could, they took a homeowner's loan at 2.5%, at substantially lower than what our interest rate is, but you're going to pay off that assessment you sell your house, you're gonna pay off that entire amount of loan that you borrowed to pay the assessment. So I don't, I don't, I don't believe that that's a, a fiscally uh, proper thing to do. Again, anybody, people can do whatever they need to do or they want to do, but if, you, but if you're going to be in the possibility of selling your house, you, you don't wanna pay off that assessment if you're gonna be selling and somebody else is gonna, gonna be picking it up. If you pay it off, and you sell, you've lost the whole cost of that assessment. So it, 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 again, it's doable. There are other, there are other options. And if you're going to be long term in your house, and you know you're not going anywhere, then they, the other solutions may be. And that's something we may, we could uh, work on uh, on working with citizens as we get the new people into the system if we so move forward. Uh, explore options to manage and reduce the high cost of sewer assessments. Uh, on homeowners to include adopting a maximum sewer assessment amount. Again, if we move forward, I think this is something that we should look into on doing that. Um, we have not on, done on that on that point right there, uh, Mr. Wazika. The only thing I, I want to call out is we have Hazard Street, which, as you know, is the most expensive sewer pro. Uh, program or project in town that just happened, but a street over a developer is uh, building a new building and the sewer assessment that he's going to get charged is about a third per uh, the price per bedroom than what hazard just got charged. So when this suggestion is being made, I'm just, I just want to clarify, do you envision that regardless of what the uh, sewer assessments were when the sewer went into those other streets because as you know as you, when you began this meeting you said that they were just kind of pulled out of a hat they weren't based off of actual construction because giving that developer the chance to connect at such a low rate it's just prolonging our issues I don't know if you would agree or disagree sir I agree completely with that part again part of the part of an ordinance change that that would be needed is that we set a rate that's the if, if our maximum assessment rate is X and we put in new, we put in new people, do we want to hit them with that whole thing? Maybe not, but I do believe they shouldn't be getting the benefit of a, of a $3,500 or a $6,600 assessment if they're, they're going in now, especially with, if you look at, just to get, throw some numbers out there, uh, we, we have $8.9 million of uncollected assessments at this point, what we've got left. On, on the on the assessments that have been issued. We've already closed out most 600 assessments are no longer on the books. They've been pay, fully paid. Yes. 600. So we owe $15 million in bonds to, to our construction and we're gonna collect $8.9 million in, in assessments that are left on the books. That number is not gonna work. It's so how's the difference gonna get paid then? That's Again, that cost is going to all be for by the, uh, the, the the rate payers and the and the on the system because again, the assessments and, and the the assessments and the user fees all go in and they use to pay off the uh, the operating costs for the for the year on on those costs. So it's not the assessments are collected are not earmarked to pay 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 the bonds. It's it's all, all put into into the fund to pay all of the to pay it. So at some point. We will not be collecting the assessments. And again, the tool that we have had developed on uh, on, on managing the uh, the cost 
will those rates will would have to go up. And that's why I agree completely that moving forward in any of these, because we've got some we've got some very big projects or potential for some big projects coming in. And some of those some of those sewer sewer assessments are already locked in where we've got where we've got no cost to the town or had no cost aside from the West Warwick and all that, but I mean as far as construction costs. So those those numbers will be coming in and also being able to be used to pay off pay off the uh, the, the bond indebtedness that we have. Uh, if we ever have a, a project that goes in and we get a substantial amount of money from a single uh, developer and we get it at a, at, at a one time, I I would love to be able to utilize that to pay off the higher interest bond. If we have enough funds coming in, utilize that. Don't just dump it into the account. Pay off the highest bond let's re, we can bring the rate down as well as get some of that debt off of our off of our uh, workload so not to use it piecemeal uh, you know and, and, and just let it sit there i'd rather take advantage to help reduce those costs i think so, that's a great suggestion you, you did make the comment that on a cash basis we are in the black i think fifty four thousand, but with what you just said where the assessments are 8.9 and the costs are 15 we cannot be in the black on a, on a cruel basis. No, not we're even not. close. No, we're not. We're not okay. on a cruel basis. I said cash. That's why I, <laughs> I said cash. Thanks. Cruel, we, we've got, yeah, we're, and again, it's going to move forward on that until we, we can get this all under control. And again, more reason why I say we, we can't just sit and let it go stagnant. If we do, again, your choices, but without new users, it's these heavy costs are going to just keep increasing and increasing on the limited number of users that we, we do have. So that is something that you got that the councils, your, yours as well as future, will have to deal with on this. Mr. Wasik, it's, uh, thank you. It's, it's 1204. Um, I, uh, maybe you could just very quickly go through the rest of these. You're in the middle of uh, number 11 and there are 18 items if you could just sort of go through these as quickly as possible. Um, and then we still want to have, we yep. still need to have a uh, public comment at the end of this meeting. Well, I, okay, number 12, engage, uh, engage a firm to perform a, a formal sewer use rate study. Yeah. We did that. Raftalis is what we utilize. They've given us some, a fantastic tool for, for doing it. Uh, they recalculated the rate with that system to, for this current year. So we've, we've, we've taken care of that recommendation and suggestion. Develop an annual operating plan, budget for the sewer fund, which includes cash flow and capital budgets as well. The annual sewer operating plan should be adopted formally by the council. We've done that. That's all part of the Raftalis program that we that we engage them to, to perform for. So we've done the, that. Evaluate the need for additional finance and administrative staff for the operations of the town sewer program. One of my, again, we need to we need to get ownership of this. We need to get the bodies in place and not just rely on our current finance department and TPW and everything else to work little pieces of this, they need to, we need to have the have staff if we move, again, if we move forward. Utilize the separate bank account established for the town sewer enterprise fund. We, we have separated at one point, these funds were all co-mingled. That has all been done. We have separated the, uh, the funds. It has its own accounting. Acquire and enhance computer application, uh, application to facilitate tracking and billing of sewer assessments. We have, we have the assessments, we have a, a system in place. All of that, we are upgrading our tax assessor, tax collector package shortly. And uh, Mo, I believe that we'll also be upgrading the, uh, the, that, that model as well, correct? You just muted yourself. I said, I'm hoping they, they did say they were going to do that after they took care of the assessor and collector, but they haven't given me a date. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, enhance controls to ensure that the development of the sewer use charges, including and consider all the various components of costs. Uh, again, Raptalis has allowed us to do, to do that. That program is uh, quite extensive. They've done a nice job on it. Um, and it's, it's individualized for us. We can project out our costs going out 15, 20 years, it gives us the ability to see where we're moving towards our debt versus our income. And, and it's a real, real nice application that they've developed. Create a study group to explore and assess the feasibility of fully regionalizing the West Warwick Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility 
including rep representation from all municipal municipalities using the treatment plan. Again, one of the options on, depending on how you move forward. So that's the 18 recommendations. As you can see, we've, we've uh, utilized and, and, and met uh, a number of them and others that we haven't because until we make a decision to move forward, there really isn't anything we can do or, or no, no, there's no sense spinning our wheels until we've decided to move forward. And then we need those, those changes. So that's the 18, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I'd like to open up to public comment. Is there anyone who would like from the members of the public to add additional comments at this time? We have no one. Uh, if anyone would like to have any, ask any additional questions, please raise your hands. We'll bring you in and uh, we will try to uh, provide an answer for you. Seeing none, ma'am. Okay. Are the members of the council have any additional questions? Oh, I see Mr. Clement's name up, Ms. Hand up. Mr. Clements? Joshua, you're in again. Yep. Hey, sorry. Just another quick question on, on usage, right? We're, we're trying to install or expand the sewer program ostensibly, maybe in the future, depends on, you know, the, the vote of the council and, and what people in the districts think. But how does Coventry compare, and I, I'm not looking for an answer today, but maybe in the future in terms of residency, uh, density, and access to sewer systems compared to some of our other, uh, we'll say, communities in Rhode Island? Uh, are we ahead, behind, lagging, uh, and then maybe some of the environmental indicators that are associated with sewer programs in general? Uh, again, not looking for an answer today unless, unless it's well known. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. the transparency of the town council and the, the sewer subcommittee uh, for this program and the challenges of the town. Thank you. Okay. Would any member of the council like to add any final comments? We have uh, we have one more, uh, ma'am. Oh, uh, Miss Lima. Hillary, you're in. Please uh, go with your question. Hey, good morning. Uh, thank you for the session today. So. Um, you know, hearing the recommendations, hearing the history of the program, um, I think it's pretty daunting to keep just thinking, well, we have to address this, we have to take next steps. What is the next step? Um, who's dictating what that next step is? What's, cons what's the consensus of what the next step is to make decisions at a broader level? Um, you know, otherwise it just seems like it's another thing we just keep saying we have to, we have to address. Mr. Waziga, I'd be happy to address that question. You may take it, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. We don't want to lose momentum. Uh, we've started the momentum today. We will continue it. Uh, this workshop is not for actions or votes. So the next steps are not going to be determined at this session. However, Mr. Waziga, as our administrative officer starting April 5th, uh, he has already been tasked by the council to work on a sewer plan. So at a, meet, a meeting, I would say su suggest April 12th or the 26th, which we our second meeting in April, uh, the town council will then specifically identify the tasks that we're going to ask him to work on so that we may move to some type of uh, logical decision about what we do with the sewer program. So we will be collecting some information so that we can make decisions that information will be coming from Mr. Wazika as a point person, and that discussion will take place at one of the first or the second meetings in April. Does that answer your question, Hillary? Yes, it does. Um, just trying to figure out timing, and I, I'm not trying to sound self-serving, but it's just as someone who's going to be representing or anticipated to represent District 4, which includes a large portion of this program, you know, I just want to make sure those people have a voice and, and have representation. So not all of the decisions are being made prior to, to May. Um, so that's just trying to figure out how, you know, what next steps look like and, um, and, and yeah. yeah. Uh, that feels appropriate. Yeah. That, that feels reasonable and appropriate. The, the members of the community always have an opportunity for public comment at every single one of our meetings. Uh, they also know that they can contact me or any member of the council if they have any questions. Um, so uh, those people have already been contacting me in that district. So 
they, uh, I believe, are as representative as we can do as long as we have this information. So I've been fielding questions uh, constantly throughout this whole uh, term since Mr. Cody did resign. Um, but certainly we will be moving forward and please encouraging members that you meet on the campaign trail to get on public comment and contact any one of us. Um, Mr. LeBlanc, you have a question. Uh, uh, just a comment um, and then a question. Uh, first, I wanted to uh, say thank you uh, to both uh, President Dixon and Mr. Wazika for allowing this session today. I think it's a, a great first step in trying to uh, come up with a solution because uh, solu solutions are necessary. Um, I, I just My question is, do we have a standard operating procedure when it comes to sewer assessments and sewer tie-ins? And the reason why I'm asking because I just feel as though for the town council to approve a sewer, a sewer tie-in before any assessment is discussed, known, or anything is just putting the, the carriage before the horse. So I just didn't know if we had a formal procedure, Mr. Wazika, and when that assessment should actually be discussed. That every, every property, the, the assessment is known on what the, prop, on what the assessment is going to be. Uh, we, uh, we have a process. I, Mo, would you like to jump in here and just explain how you do it when you've got new ones coming in? Sure. Um, basically, in the case of, I'll, I'll go with betterments, when a developer will contact me and ask what the assessment is going to be, I will tell them. And if I know a house is going to have a CO, I'll put a deferment right on the sewer program so that it's visible on any municipal lien certificates. If a homeowner calls me and asks, says the line is like possibly going to go by, what are they going to see as far as an assessment? I can tell them based on the last contract what they're looking at. Um, in the case of assessments that you don't see, there are certain reasons why an assessment will not be done at that point. Part of it could be because it's on a piece of property that does have an assessment. And until the additional building is tied in, there's no change in use. So there is no assessment until we know what the change in use is gonna be. It could be because a parcel is not supposed to be assessed yet because it's not part of a certain project and it's now becoming part of that project so it will be assessed once it has the ability to tie in. Um, I will always give anybody that calls a projected assessment. It will not be an exact assessment because we don't know until they let us know what the gallons per day is gonna be or until I know how many bedrooms there are. Um, I, I don't know what else you wanna know. Uh, no, thank you for that explanation. I just, um... As a town council member, I just feel as though the town council should know what the assessment is before proving a sewer tie-in. And the reason why I say that is because on Arnold Road and on Hazard Street, when the construction was completed, we act, the town council actually approved all the sewer assessments and then allowed sewer tie-in. So I just I want to make sure that we have a proper procedure in place. That's you all. If there, has, if there is something that you want to know, you can certainly contact me and let me know that an assessment is not on a property, and I will explain to you why it is not and what the assessment is going to be in advance. That would be great. Thank you. Jamie, any, Mr. LeBlanc, any known assessments from now on on tie-ins? We will throw that number on top of the paperwork just so the council can see. And in a lot of cases, they've already been paying the assessment for you. Uh, like we had one on Sandy Bottom. He'd been paying for years and years. And so, but we will throw that number on there so you're aware of uh, moving forward. We will do that. Thank you, Mr. Wazika. No Mr. Wazika, can I also put a request in because this is a short-term item. I'd also like to know what the capacity on the line is. So when, for example, we go to approve an item, how, how do we make sure that we're approving a proper tie-in on that particular line. Conceptually, we probably have the capacity based on everything we've talked about. But in the past, I've asked, 
you know, how, how do we know what I'm, I, I don't want to approve something and then find out later, Jen, you shouldn't have done that because that line is at capacity. I just want to avoid a situation like that. Glenn, correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Is it that those capacities of the lines have already been calculated to, to assume full connections. Am I right? Yes. So every application for a tie-in that comes through goes through the review process of West Walwick and Coventry. So our engineer will review it. He will give us his opinion at the meeting. West Walwick will review it and they will give us a written opinion of, of their comments. So we never even review a tie-in until we have comments from both the town of Coventry and the town of West Walwick. And so I'm on the sewer subcommittee and I, I see that piece of paper that says, you know, West Warwick signed off. And I, I'm in the meeting and I hear Bruce say, yes, I've been through this. But when I ask the individual question, it doesn't seem to get answered. Right. So um, along those lines, I'm not alleging that it's not being done. I'm simply asking, was this checked? What, what's the number? Do we have capacity? So maybe what we can do is if there's other questions like that, that maybe Councilperson uh, Shockley or even um, uh, President Dixon have, we can collaborate together and provide some of those in the next session that we provide the next steps and tasks to Ms. Rizika. So, okay. Thank and you. I can tell you that I think the specific number that you're looking for for each tie-in is a very complicated number to get. So if you want to know the capacity of, say, the main that any particular tie-in is connecting to, it's, it's moderately easy to figure out the capacity at the end of that main based on the size of the pipe because mm -hmm. the capacity is based on the size of the pipe. However, mm -hmm. the capacity anywhere in the middle of the pipe depends upon the capacity of the pipe coming from the building in addition to all the upstream components that are discharging at the same time. Yes, and I think that goes to the, um, the overall program ownership and that we should be able to prove who is looking at that. And that's what I'm more concerned about than the individual to the number, you know, um, complex number. So what I'm looking for is as I'm approving this ultimate tie-in, was the proper procedure done? And if the answer is yes, that's fine. I'd like to know what what that was, what that looked like as I go to then approve. Wait. And I, I understand this is a complex process, but I think part of the reason we're getting together today is to kind of break those pieces apart and understand what is it that we should be looking at when we go to make these decisions. Where, where the issue comes in, Jen, because all of the properties on those lines, the calculations were all done during the design phase and they're built to handle all of that. Where we have an issue is if we're going to put a new project in that's going to require a substantial amount. And I'm going to bring Kevin uh, Kevin McGee in because we've just had an issue where we've uh, had a review done of Kevin. Are you, are you still there? You fall asleep. <laughs> Thank you, sir. There we go. Good. Thank you. Why don't you just go over what the, the recent uh, review of the capacity of uh, what we just had had checked for potential development? Yeah, we had uh, Weston and Samson do a capacity check on a line uh, coming down Tidal Avenue. And they were able to find out through their calculations that the amount of units being utilized with the existing line could theoretically handle it. Keep in mind that the effluent is not all going to come at the same time. So the capacity of the line is staged or dosed in a dosing chamber is based upon depending on where the pump station may be located. So it's 99.9%. .9 you are never going to have everybody discharging at the same time. So the capacity of the pipe is going to fluctuate depending on when those flows will be happening. And we I, I can understand um, fluctuation. And uh, for the most part, I understand the complexities at this point. Um, I am not a construction person, but maybe if you're, if what you're telling me is this is too complicated for a town council member to understand, like myself, then maybe we need a new owner. 
So um, I, I'm well, just going to throw that out there. I, I hear a couple well, people saying this is very complex. And so what I'm saying is, as someone who's approving the line, these are the types of things that I'd like to be informed of as I'm approving that. What, 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 please understand that my question, my answer was based upon the current application that was just made. No implication of anything about what a town council person should have or not have as far as information. Yes, thank you, Director McGee. Thank you. The reason I brought Kevin in on this, uh, Ms. Ludwig, was to demonstrate that we are doing, we, we have any questions at all on whether or not there is capacity available on a line or anything, we'll, we'll have it done before to make sure that we, there is. We, that's the last thing we're gonna do is put something on that we can't handle and then uh, have it, no, no pun intended, blow up in our faces. So no. we, uh, we do all of that uh, as part of, the, uh, part of the due diligence on any of these that come forward. So if they're, if they're hitting the council's purview, then we have done, and it, it's always done, and it's reviewed by uh, the sewer subcommittee uh, as well. And so they are, they, we are doing it. But uh, moving forward again, the changes that on what you receive in council, we can, uh, we can always look at what, we, what we'll do better and give you more information to your decision. Thank you. And as we mentioned before, we will be having agenda items. We will continue the discussion I believe that there will be more than a couple more sessions. There probably might be six or eight more sessions, maybe more, uh, to determine the future of the program. But in order to determine the future of the program, we're going to be collecting a lot of data. And then if at that point the council can make determinations about what kind of data it needs in order to make informed decisions. So thank you for your questions, uh, Ms. Ludwig, uh, Mr. Shockley, and Mr. LeBlanc. Um, all members of the uh, public who participated today. Thank you so much. Mr. Wazika, thank you for your very thorough in-depth uh, discussion about uh, the history of the program, uh, some of the ideas about the future of the program and where we are in, re in relationship to the recommendations that we received from the Auditor General's report, which was March, 2019. I also want to thank Ms. Mills for being with us today. Um, also, Ms. Inn, uh, Mrs. Toole, thank you so much. You provided a lot of value-added information, as did Mr. Serka. Thank you so much for participating uh, this evening, or this, I keep on thinking it's this evening. We still have a long day to go. Um, and also, thank you to Mr. LeBlanc, who suggested that we have some Saturday sessions so that we could attract more people. Um, we didn't attract as many people, but I always felt quantity is not necessarily as important as quality. And we got some very good questions from the public. And I'm sure that as we move forward, we'll, we'll be gaining uh, an enthusiastic um, audience. So thank you so much. Now, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. LeBlanc. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Ms. Ludwig. Any discussion about adjournment? Okay, I'll do a roll call vote. Um, Raise your hand if you approve the motion to adjourn. One, two, three. My hands up. Thank you, four. Four yeas, no nays. Thank you everyone. Have a delightful Saturday afternoon and evening. It's a beautiful day. Thank you. Kevin, Monique, Steph, uh, Lisa, thank you all for, uh, for giving up your Saturday today. I appreciate it. And uh, no, there will be no overtime, sorry. But uh, thank you for uh, being here. Uh, the, the pizza will come in an hour. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye now.